Hi everyone, I'm Phil Van Allen, and this is a quick update on the brand new NetLab Toolkit, or NTK. We're planning an alpha release in January, and I wanted to show you what's coming. As you may know, the old toolkit runs in Flash, while this new one is built in a completely new architecture based on HTML5 and Node.js. Because of this, it runs in any browser and doesn't need Flash at all. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, so here you can see we have a uh, analog in widget in a new style um, running in the browser here. And as you can see, as I turn the knob um, on the Arduino, we're seeing that reflected in the widget. Now, uh, let's add an analog out so we can make the LED light up. So I just uh, click on the analog out and drag to connect. So that's new, that makes it much easier than the old system. And then as I vary the knob, you can see that the brightness of the LED is changing. Now, you can see in the widget that uh, we can set the minimum and maximum uh, range of the widget. So if we change this to 255, um, now, um, now as I move the knob up and down, you can see that even though the full range is 1,023, the output range of the widget is 255, thereby giving us the, the, the knob gets the full range and uh, lights up the LED accordingly. So it would be easy to um, invert this also. So if I change it around now, um, if I turn the knob down, the light goes up and vice versa. We also have smoothing and easing built into the widget. So to add another widget, I simply um, can say click on say servo, bring that in, just connect it up. And now with a single widget, I'm controlling two outputs. So what I want to do now is take you through several examples that show you some of the features of the new toolkit. Okay, in this first example, you can see we have two analog ends here and here, and then they both go into a code widget, which then uh, controls an image widget, which is manipulating this graphic here. And um, this shows a new feature in the new toolkit, which is the ability to have more than one input here. So in the old one, we were kind of limited to just a single input per widget. So now you can see in the code, it has two inputs, and then the image widget, widget also has one for the X, the Y, and the opacity. So by default, the code widget simply adds its two inputs together. Um, so you can see if I move this up and down, and then this one up and down, it adds these two numbers to get this number. But of course, we can change the code to do anything we want. So let's um, take a look at the code here. We pop open the more thing, and now I'm going to say math.max, built-in aspect of JavaScript, and uh, make it so that instead of adding the two inputs together, we'll only take the maximum of the whichever um, uh, uh, sensor has a higher value. So in this case, this one has the higher value, and if I stop at 285, now anything below that doesn't go but then when I get above, that controls it. So a simple bit of JavaScript, and um, the code widget really allows you to create functionality that isn't built into the toolkit very easily. In this example, we're showing a interface widget, the knob here, which allows us to create uh, interfaces on the screen. Uh, this is the knob one. We also have a button one. Um, so this would create a button um, these are in early development, so they'll, they'll allow more styling and so on, but you can get a basic idea. And what we've got is the, the knob control controlling an audio widget. And so this is using pure HTML5 audio. There's no flash here. So if I uh, move this up, you can hear that uh, it starts playing the sound. And, but notice that also we have the iPad here. And so I can uh, control the exact same system. So the iPad is talking to the same server that's running in Node.js right now on the computer, but that server, of course, could be running on another device like an Arduino Tray or Intel Galileo or Edison. So I can control the same thing here. And now um, when I go above the 500, that triggers the audio to turn on. And you can hear that the audio is actually, in this case, playing out of the the uh, iPad that I have here. So um, we can turn the audio on and off. And then um, once we've designed our project, one of the features of the toolkit is that it allows you to uh, hide all the widgets and just uh, leave what's remaining on the screen. So if I click on the hide um, uh, widget button now, I can still have the functionality and this could include talking to say, uh, turn that off, 
this could include uh, talking to the Arduino or other hardware um, in addition to having the screen interface. So again, play sound, stop sound, interface, and uh, ultimately um, it would uh, remove the uh, controls here on the, on the side. In this example, we're showing a new widget that's in the NetLab Toolkit, this splitter widget here. So this splitter widget takes an input from any source, in this case an analog in on the Arduino, as you can see, and takes that single input, splits it out into up to four different outputs. And those outputs have center points um, that are set here, and you can change those, but right now they're set to 200, 400, 600, and 800. And that means that when the input gets to a certain value that matches a particular output, that will then send an output on to whatever it's connected to. In this case, the volume of an audio widget. So you can see 200 to that one and so on down to each of the widgets. So let me just show you how this works. So as I increase the knob level, when we get near 200, we're now sending audio or sending a volume signal to that first audio widget. And then as I continue to increase, now we're over to the second audio one, which is here. And onto the third one, that's the drums here. And to the fourth one. So you can see as I move the knob, I'm having a single object, in this case a knob sensor, and controlling up to four different objects. And here we've got audio, but these could replace by, say, uh, four servo motors. So we could have a single input control the operation of four different servo motors. In this example, we're having a analog in here, listen to the Arduino, uh, the knob here, and that then is feeding this cloud widget. And the cloud widget is sending data out to the SparkFun uh, data service called FANT. It's then uh, being read over here um, on a completely separate computer. We're listening to a cloud in, which is then feeding a video. And when the cloud in um, amount goes above 500, the video will start playing. So let me show you that. So you can see I've turned the knob all the way up. And um, there's a delay because of the service uh, requires only a certain bandwidth. So you can see that our cloud out is now sending 1023, and now it's received over here in the cloud in, and that started the video playing. So you can see that ultimately, um, the NetLab Toolkit thing can be running on multiple devices, each talking to each other, in this case, through a cloud service like SparkFun's FANT. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, that's it for this quick uh, overview of the new NetLab Toolkit, or NTK. We'll see you in January, hopefully, with an alpha release. Talk to you soon.